in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I hope that you enjoy the feature that follows this introduction. And I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. And like always, think for yourself. With that said, the feature presentation begins right now. Take it easy. I'll see you later and respect you.
Let me tell you how real love is. Instead of one, I would have given God two ribs. Plus my heart, now that's a beautiful star. She would have never been tricked, because on that stick's head would have been a lick. I'm not saying it's all her fault, but the knowledge of herself and the divine love for her by us was lost. However, not today, for her real help made men will bear her cross. They stay still, waters run deep, and I promise on your true purpose I'll never sleep. For all important men of any religion came from your womb, and to let you forget that is to seal our doom. Never will I let you fall again, for I'm willing and have been dying inside for the result of male chauvinistic sin. I'll do my best, for that's all a man can do, because there will be no us if it weren't for you. I love my black woman. This is a storyboard exclusive. Peace, forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And once again, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I am your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, the angel snubbed up seven. And uh, here I am. <laughs> All righty then. Time passes quickly, so let me say what I need to say in this brief period of time. When I was a younger person, about 18 or 19 years old, I was able to experience going to the Audubon Ballroom in New York City. And I went up the same steps that our great uh, ancestor, the one known as Malcolm X, probably went up. And according to those around me and the owners of that uh, particular uh, venue, I stood on the same spot where Malcolm was assassinated. I stood in front of the podium and I looked outwards. And as I stood there, I could almost feel the chaos and the mayhem that broke out on that uh, February 21st, 1965. I could almost feel those pistol shots hit my body in that gun blast that fell our great leader, Brother Malcolm X, who was Malik Shabazz at the time. That's the name that he had chosen after he left the nation of Islam. But what makes me to think about this is why was Malcolm willing to risk his life to do what he was doing regardless to his conflict with the nation of Islam? He was doing what he was doing because of love for his people. Malcolm realized no matter how famous he became or where he went in life where he got notoriety and perhaps even riches, it meant nothing as long as his people were seen as nothing. So. I don't care how billionaires Oprah Winfrey becomes. She is still a nothing because she comes from out of a nothing people. And since she will help her nothings become something, then they will give her a little respect because of her money. But they don't respect where she came from and her, her people. The root where she come from. I don't care how high Michael Jackson flew or how pretty Michael Jordan can 
dunk a ball. The world may respect them and give them a little honor because of their talents and because of their riches. But when it's all said and done, Oprah is that uh, woman, that Negro and Negress that's talking on television. That's that Negro, that coon that shine that's dunking a basketball. That Negro there, that coon sold 40 million records. So it don't make no difference because the people they come from are considered poor justice and nobodies. And some of their own people come on YouTube and say the same thing and they think that they are helping us. They are talking about how black men don't support their children and how black women produce babies that turn into bugs and monsters. And we alcoholics and prostitutes and all those things of which we already know we suffer. Why don't you tell us? And the sad thing, you claim that you love us. How do you love somebody always talking about their faults? Malcolm X is a perfect example because he was a criminal, he was a hoodlum, but he came up out of that. So instead of concentrating on what Malcolm was, why don't we concentrate on what we can become? A prostitute don't want to hear, you're a prostitute, you're a prostitute, you're a prostitute. Nobody want to hear that. Nobody want to hear about their faults. Find that which is good inside of us. That's how you help people. Because many of us do feel we are nothing. And if we feel we are nothing, and I walk up to you with a pistol and put it to your face, since I'm nothing, what makes you think I'm going to feel any compassion, have any heart for you? All thing I want is what you got, and I'll pull the trigger, regardless whether I get it or not, because I'm nothing, so your life don't mean nothing to me. Just because a man, black man, don't pay child support, and you look at him like he's a nothing. But maybe if that black woman that bore his children called him and said, Look, we got somebody here messing with your, your uh, kids. He might not give no money. But as soon as that woman said, Hey, somebody messing with your kids, he jumped in the car on a bus. Hey, what you doing, man? Messing with my kids. Oh, nigga, you don't even pay. I don't care if I don't pay child support. You ain't putting your hands on my damn kids. I bet you that. He protects his children, and you bet not put your hands on my kids' mom either. We don't know why he's not paying child support. And then a man in a situation, especially in the economy with the recession or whatever, there are a lot of brothers like that. But the main thing we like to do is always down and judge people. We never look for the uh, silver lining in the dark cloud. We always talk about the dark cloud. There, are, There is good in people. There is good in us. And that's why Malcolm gave his life. Because even though, yeah, we suffer much ill, but that don't mean we are a lost cause and we're not generally good. I know black people that would give you their last dime. I used to sell the Final Call newspaper, and a brother might be getting ready to buy a beer. I'll come up, hey, brother, why don't you get this? Final call newspaper. He looks at his money, look at the paper, look at me because he understands that I'm out here trying to help black people do good and try to do well. So instead of the beer, he said, well, I guess I have to wait till next time. He gave me a dollar and he take that final call paper and might not even read it. Because he got still got a good heart. Black women have monsters. 
should be shaming yourself for coming in the public signal women have monsters. Do you live with them? You don't understand the circumstance of nothing. You just run in your mouth because you don't like it because you want us really to better our condition so we be better slaves for your master. I don't want you to be better for the master. Matter of fact, stay the way you are if you want to, you want to do is serve your ancestors oppressor. I love it. Stay in that condition. But I want us out of that condition and not to want us out of our condition, not so that we can benefit another people, so we can benefit ourselves, so we can rise ourselves, love ourselves. Because Malcolm X and me, we love us. Do you understand? I love you, black man. I love you, black woman. How can I claim that I love everybody and I have not loved myself? I have to love this black nose. Love this kinky hair. Love these thick lips. Love that big bottom you got, black woman. Oh, yes. That's what it's about. Show us some love sometimes. I already know about the, the garbage on this video. Just look, give me a hug. Ah, yes. Love you, black man. Try to run out. This wasn't as the reality's temple on earth, and the reality is I love me. I love me, because as long as y'all nothing, I'll always be nothing. Peace. Till next time. Asalaamu Alaikum. Habari Ghani. Peace to all my beautiful and wonderful black sisters out there in uh YouTube land and on TV if y'all can get me on there I want to romance you a little bit on this one this is just for the sisters y'all brothers can listen too but this is for my queens and I don't care how many babies you got I don't care if you're smoking some weed I don't care what your situation is, sister, this is for you. We're going to talk a little bit after I get done. I want to read this poem to you real quick. So here we go. Oh, my, oh, my. There she is, the beautiful one. A lot. A glow none can compare. I feel like melting butter in her presence. May I walk with you? You of whom your skin is so smooth like Italian glass and dark like a sweet chocolate bar. One can only admire your beauty, your essence, your honor. Like the sun that brings life upon the earth also brings a warmth to my heart. Would it be wrong to seek one such as yourself? Would it be wrong to ask for your hand? Would it be wrong to want to hold you close as we walk along the sand? You are sweet as the finest chocolate, as wrong as any queen to me, just as famous as an actress on some movie screen. Mmm, good. Much more appealing than any, they say, chicken soup. Much more appealing than raisin bread. Of you, darling, I suffer, breathe. I need much more than two scoops. So to you, my chocolate little princess, the object of my desire, the one who can light up a universe and set my heart on fire. You are more precious than any diamond or even that of gold. A smile that is so fine and dandy. Before I close, would you accept this rose? And before I fail to mention, you are dark and sweet like chocolate. And chocolate is my favorite type of candy.
Thank you for listening. Now, as I said before, my, uh, I hope that you enjoyed that poem. It's for you. Everything that I do is for you. It's for us, for my people. And you can always correct me if I'm in error. Y'all know that. It's for you. So, I don't make videos as good as y'all do. So, let me get to this before my time ends, because my equipment is really crappy. Um, sister, you got to straighten up, okay? This is coming from your brother that would never bash you. I never talk about you. You didn't hear it all. You didn't hear that you are this and you're that and that. Over and over on YouTube, you this and you that and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what? I'm your brother. Some of that stuff is true. It is, okay? And a lot of what y'all say about black men is true. But we don't have to stay that way. When I was growing up, one of my uh, schoolmates told me I was stinky, told me I was nasty looking, told me that I was dirty, and tears ran from my eyes, not because she was telling me a lie, my schoolmate, it was because it was the truth. I didn't have to be that way. I chose to be stinky. I chose to be nasty. I chose to be those things. Now, I could have got angry and turned around, tried to find her fault, and talk about her. But see, even as a child, I never argued with the truth. That was true. Everything that she was saying. So when I went home, in shame, and disappointed in myself because I could have done better. I straightened up my clothes. I ironed my clothes. Combed my hair. When I went home, excuse me, when I went back to school the next day, I straightened all that out. So when she looked at me, she just looked and turned her head because there was nothing she could talk about no more. And what she was saying was good for me. It wasn't bad. So what I'm saying to you, guess what some of these male, uh, female bashes are saying? Guess what they're saying is true? Don't keep it that way. We need to accept a responsibility for ourselves like I did when I was a child. Take that back. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik. And this is the realities simple on earth. Assalamu alaikum, Habarigani, and all those words that uh, mean peace. Due to the limited time frame of these videos and my technical difficulties, we want to go ahead and get into this video, uh, the subject. Now, I want to say to us that just by observing here on YouTube, let alone the world in general, there seems to be an extreme hatred, and a will to make mockery of the descendants of slaves or black people born in these United States. What I want to attempt to do on this video is that I'm not going to remind us of coming in from the club last night drunk. The poor sister that just had a 
baby and the father of that baby, who she thinks is the father, didn't come to the hospital to see that baby born. Or the guy who is risking his uh, employment, trying to do a little crack on the job. The sister that's angry at the brother and now she's a man hater or vice versa. The brother is mad at the sisters because of whatever and they are upset with the opposite sex. Or just a plain stupid brother and sister that's illiterate, has no education, or the brother or sister that has religion has and gone overboard and just went ballistic, but they don't live the Christian or the Muslim life. You want to know something? That's not what this video is about. Because we are very familiar with the negative things that are told of us. We know all these things. YouTube is full of all these negative energies around us. And as I travel through the internet here on YouTube, that's all I can feel that foul of hatred towards darker peoples. But on this video, if you don't go nowhere else, you're going to get some love here. Because I respect you, brother, even though you just finished that marijuana joint. I don't care if you only went to a third grade education. I don't care if you smell bad, you ain't took a bath in three or four weeks. I don't care, sister, if you got five children with five different daddies. I don't care about none of that. I want you to know that if nobody loves you, I do. Because I understand that all darker peoples on this planet, that's my family. So if you're suffering and having problems, then I'm suffering and having problems. If you are somewhere on this planet and you're starving, then I'm starving. I can feel your pain. That's why. I can't let go of the memory of slavery because I can feel the hurt and the pain of that slave in that field. Working from sun up to sun down, I can feel the pain of that African laying in that boat, growing for weeks and weeks in this ship at the bottom of this boat, shackled to the floor. Laying in his own feces and urine for days with little food and water. And then once he do make it to the Americas, if he get one of those bad muscles, they keep him in check with force, with the will, with other uh forms of giving him pain. He rapes you, beloved sisters. He degrades you. And he kills your man in front of you to show you I'm in charge, damn it. And it still continues today. That's why it's necessary to come on YouTube and degrade black men and women. And what happens is so sad is that y'all do it to yourself. You sit around and make videos all day long about the problems black people have. But you never offer no solution and you never say, I care about you. I'm speaking harsh because I can. I don't know how I express myself to you, then it looks as though I'm angry with you, but I care about you. That's not too what you express. You come on here, you show self-hatred 
take itself. Well, on this video, I'm expressing I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a drunk. I don't care if you're a hoe. I don't care if you're a nigga or a bitch or whatever you want to call yourself or somebody has called you. I'm going to love you. For real. Not because God told me to. Not because I read it in the Quran. Because I know that I am you and you are me. So if I want the best for me, then I want the best for you. We don't see that because we become a destroyed people. Full of self-hate. So what? So now that we do to ourselves what the enemy has done to us, and he sits back and laughs, now he don't have to kill us because we kill ourselves. He don't have to hate us because we hate ourselves. But on this video, I'm going to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I love us. And I don't care how you act. I'm going to continue to love you. Just like black people try to show that they love white folks and allow themselves to be bit by dogs and sprayed with fire hoses to try to find some kind of unity and love with an enemy. Then if to love you means that you're going to call me a nigga or you're going to spit in my face or whatever, then I... In, in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. I just wanted to make this a short video. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. What short video? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to make it. I, look, I just have so much to say. I do. I do. And I think for the views that I get, for the subs that I get, for the full 10 minute videos that I constantly make, I think I'm doing very, very well. Especially when a lot of white folks don't like what I have to say. And you want to know something? I'll tell you the truth. I blame a lot of stuff on white people, but there are a lot of black people, well not black people, dark Europeans, who don't like what I have to say either. And it's real slick if you are dark European to flag my video, because especially if it's a video about white people, it's very slick for you. Y'all dark Europeans to flag my video because you know you're going to blame it. I'm going to blame it on white people. So don't think that you tricked me. I understand the mentality that's out there in YouTube, man. I, I understand you. I understand you. There are a lot of so-called black people that don't like me. And there are, of course, white folks that don't like me. I'm in the, I'm like a sandwich. I got, I'm the meat and I got two pieces of bread that don't like me on each side. So, but I can, I can handle it. The only thing that you can do is flag me. Cause you can't respond. You don't have no choice. Because what you got to offer can't deal with Angel Snup Nup 7. So your best bet is to flag me. You already know that. So get the flagging. There you go. I'll just pop up somewhere else. I don't mind popping up somewhere else. You ain't gonna stop. There are too many computers on the planet for you to stop Angel Snuffin' Up 7. And the people want to listen to Angel Snuffin' Up 7. And that's why no matter where I go, they'll follow. They'll find me. But that's not the subject of this video. I didn't want to you know something, I really should start this video again because I don't want to take what I want to say in this video. 
So maybe it's good. African Americans, that's, that includes me. <laughs> I'm considered an African American. We are a beautiful people. I know there are a lot of those who may watch this video and say, what, what about the ones that's a criminal and they did this yesterday and they did that and that. I don't care what they did. We as a people have kind hearts. We are a beautiful, peace, peaceful. I mean, come on now. You tell me anybody that can be treated the way we've been treated in America and we smile at our oppressors and we and we love them. <laughs> now it's been a while since I've really been out in the street talking to black people. Back in the day when I was in the Nation of Islam, I used to go to door to door out in the street and talk to my people. I don't care if you was a prostitute. I don't care if you was a drug dealer. I don't care if you was a gang member. I don't care if you was a Christian or Muslim or agnostic. I don't care what we were. I don't care if you was a baby or whatever. I went out and I was in the street talking to black people. And if we are, and if you approach most black people in a civil and cordial manner with no disrespect and they allow, and if we put black people in a position where they don't have to fear about what they're going to say about white folks because they scared that the white man going to, you a racist too. I knew you was hanging with him. When I get around black folks, the real us, even some of us that have committed crimes, you see the good heart in us. Now I don't know nothing about Africans. And all these other people. I can only talk about those of us who are descendants of slaves now called black or African American. We are a beautiful people. Strong people. This idiot got a video talking about black people ain't strong. You got to be strong. How you gonna catch the hell we caught and smile? This is what you don't understand. We went through this great suffering and we still can party. We can get down. That's the problem. We need to stop getting down. We need to get up. We've been down for over 300 years. But even so, we are a beautiful people. We are not evil. We have not taken nobody's land from them. We have not enslaved nobody. We have not committed atrocity. We don't, we have not done nothing against the earth. Whatever we've done is because we live with people who do that. They got our hand. But if it left it up to us, we're not like that. Even in our sad condition that we are in today. We have a connection to the universe. We have a connection to this planet. We don't want to hurt this planet. Nor do we have a heart to hurt any living thing like that. That is not us. So I want to say simply in this video... Black man and woman in America. I know we are in bad shape. But never allow nobody to paint you as an inferior. As a criminal. Because that's not who we are. We're not criminals. We are not prostitutes. We're not pimps and gang members that do evil in their own neighborhood. This, this is not us as a people. This is the consequences of living in a society 
that is detrimental to our heart. And our heart contains a lot of righteousness. Our heart contains a lot of good. I have sat with gang members that have told me how many people they have killed. But if you talk to them, you can hear the pain because that's not them really. That's not in their heart. That's not their nature as some may say. That's not them. African American, so called black man in America. I will defend us with all I have. Because I know we are not that. I don't care how bad. You can, you can call me anything you want. You can talk about Brother Talib like a dog. But I will defend and stand against anybody that talk against about black people. African American. Hebrew is a light. Nation of Islam. Whatever you may want to call yourself. I'm going to defend us. Because I know us is me. And I'm a beautiful person in my heart. And I know since we are our family, it's you too. So, I know there are black people that flag my video. It's happened before. I'm still going to stand for my people. Those of us who call ourselves African Americans. Those who, are, who call themselves black. Because I know you only flag my video out of ignorance. It's not in your heart. You acted out Due to words and things that you probably can't comprehend and understand. I just have to deal with it. Because when it's all said and done. You. Black man and woman in America. Y'all are some beautiful people. And don't let nobody tell you less. This is your brother Talib Ibn Ra. This was and is. The Reality's Temple on Earth. Peace. Forever and always, this is the reality temple on the earth, and I am your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and um, let me go ahead and get into this subject real quick, because of time limitation. What brings me to this subject is... The other day I was driving, and I saw this young black sister walking down the street, and I watched her. She's wearing, I mean, she has some pretty nice fitting jeans and whatever, and uh, it was just amazing. Now, truthfully, I would tell you she was looking sort of, on the sexy side, okay, but black women are sexy like that. I can do that. I can watch the pretty young sisters or older women or whoever, sisters walking down the street. I can do that. I'm saying I don't have no wife or no girlfriends hanging on my shoulder. Yes, the sister was kicking. I like what I saw and, and blah, 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 blah. It's a bad thing. And I don't care how spiritual you are, men are attracted to women. When women look good, you know, that's just, uh, that's just nature. But since my mind is above the physical attraction, since my mind has evolved beyond the sexual attraction, then as she walks down the street, not only am I attracted to what she is showing my eyes physically, but I can also see what's attracting me to her spiritually or mentally. Because as this young sister walks down the street, even she don't understand the greatness that's in her genes. She don't understand the power and the history 
of her people that she don't know that she comes from a dynamic and great people. We don't have no idea because we're too busy bashing each other, trying to find anything negative, and that which is negative was caused by somebody that stole us and put us in this condition. Not to say that perhaps we wouldn't be suffering this, but not on the scale that it has occurred because nobody around the world does themselves and has such self-hatred as the so-called Negro or those who are descendants of black people born in America. That's not the subject. The subject of this video is that she was carrying herself with a swag, with a bounce. Here she is walking down the street with a head held up high because even though it's been generations since her people have been kings and queens in their own nation, upon their own lands, that fire is still in us. This video is not about bashing black women. This video is not about bashing black men. This video today is about loving black people because Brother Tali loves black people. Do you know why? Because Brother Tali is black. Why do I love black people? I have no choice in the matter. As a child, I was ostracized from my own. Not because I was stealing from them. Not because I was a liar or a cheat or a rapist or a murderer. It was because, simply because I was too black for the black people. And you had black people making mockery of themselves. So I had to learn how to either love being black or hate my blackness and resort to perhaps plastic surgery, of course straightening your hair, um, bleaching the skin, those things. But instead, I began a journey of self-love. So with that self-love, I can stand the way I stand because I can feel the hurt from that slave on that boat coming across here on the sea, sending his own urine and feces. I can feel it because I have self-love. So that's part of me laying in that boat. That's part of me being whipped by that bad muscle. That's part of me, and I can still feel it. I felt that bullet go through the neck of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. I feel it because that's part of me. I can feel it when they unjustly throw my brothers and sisters in these jails and these prisons and mental institutions because that's me. I can feel you when you are starving because that's me. You can come on YouTube and talk about black people all you want. But that's not the majority of us. Because I've been in the home. I used to go into the home and still will go to your house. I still will go to your apartments and talk with you. I've never had a bad meeting in a church. I've been to visiting many churches and those brothers that run these churches have always welcomed me with open arms and I openly say, openly say, I don't believe in God. But that's that kind heart. They don't trip off of that because if it's up to them, we're going to get you, brother, sooner or later. I've been to many brothers and sisters' homes, working with open arms, with differences of opinion. And black people even give donations to things they don't believe in, but because you are a black person, 
trying to do good, and black people are about doing good. We're not about this craziness that it seems like we are about on YouTube. I've seen many brothers open doors for sisters. I've seen many sisters pick up when somebody try to down black men. That's not what we're about because in our hearts, we are connected to one another and we're family. We're family. So on this video, I proclaim, and I don't care what nobody else want to do, but on this video, I'm going to say, I don't care if you just robbed me last night. I don't care if you just took some stuff off my car. I don't care if you just finished some weed. I don't care if you got five different babies, daddies, or whatever. I don't care if you straighten your hair. I don't care if you got plastic surgery. On this video, Brother Talik says, I love black people. We can always strive to be better. Always. But why should we strive to be better? if we don't care about ourselves. But if somebody shows us that they care, perhaps they strive to be a little better. It's not an overnight thing because we're in bad shape. You don't cure cancer overnight. It's a steady process. So with this video, y'all out there, brothers and sisters, I love y'all, man. I'm not scared of y'all young brothers out there on the streets. What's up, my nigga? It ain't my style. I sound, to me, I sound so whack saying that, but what's up? Sister? Brother? I like Beyonce. I like Chris Brown. I like all the new happening things. I like hip-hop music. I like and love black people. So why don't us today Start this whole thing anew and leave all that negativity behind because that's not what we're about for real. We are loving and caring people. And I love black folks. Peace for heaven always. This is your brother Tali. And y'all think about it. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. Don't be scared. This is the Realities Temple. On Peace, fam, and always. This is your brother, uh, Talik Ibn Ra, and of course, welcome to another exciting edition of the Reality Temple on Earth. This video is perhaps the most personal one I'll probably ever make. And like always, it could cause me, cause me to lose uh, subscribers. But I'm not here to gain subscribers. I'm here to offer my opinion about different subjects. This subject is about me. Our, uh, we have a lot of black people, a lot of them on YouTube. They have extreme anger and hatred towards Caucasian people because some of them today continue to practice white supremacy and 
They are the children of those who held our ancestors in chains for over 300 years. There is nothing funny about my grandmother being raped and my grandfather's being castrated, lynched and hung, or Emmett Till head being crushed and then thrown into a, a river, or Martin Luther King having his child uh, served by a bullet in his, and shot through the neck. Those things should cause us to be angry, and those Caucasian people that don't understand that, you have a problem when black people have suffered much hurt, and then what makes it so bad is that you may say, oh, that was 300 years ago or 400 years ago, but you see, what keeps it going is that you have certain Caucasian people today in a government with its laws and its education system still rooted in white supremacy that continue to do the same thing today. And so you should not be shocked that certain black people have a hatred and despise Caucasian people. It should not be no shock. They are angry and upset because of the hurt and the pain of these things done to us as a people. And I want to take this to a personal level to give us something to think about for those black people who think like this because this channel, it would seem as though it's very pro-black, and it is. But this black man that you see before you have been hurt by black people more than any Caucasian person. Even growing up as a child, I was made fun of because I was dark skinned, not by white people, but by black people. Do you know how hurtful that is? And then not only was it outside black people, but my own family members made fun of me because I was dark. Do you hear me, what I'm saying to you? And as I was growing up, my black friends stole and lied on me. My white friends, when I was a child, because I did not know about this racism stuff. And then I was an outcast because I was black. But the white children accepted me. They didn't care that I was black. They didn't care I was poor. But being black and poor, the black people made fun of you because you was poor and didn't have the latest fashion, the latest clothes, and you was black. The white children, no matter how I came to school, whether I had money or didn't have money, they didn't care. I have never, never had a, a gun raised to my head or put at me, except in the, in the uh, law enforcement situation that I got involved in, and that was because of a black person. I've been robbed by black people three times. And just last year, shotguns pointed at me. What I'm trying to say, why, if y'all hate white folks so bad and upset, why should I love black people when black people have hurt me all my life? It was a black man, his name uh, Anthony Ross goes by the stage name of Viola Love. Lot stole $4,000 from me. Or more. I'm not very sure. It could be more. They contacted a lot and caused me to be charged falsely with uh, 
criminal activity. Then, of course, the white man is going to take advantage of that, and I ended up in a mental institution because of this black man, not because of a white man. Then when I try to get out, a black judge, knowing what happened, didn't try to show no compassion or no mercy or love to me, kept them, keep me in there. And the black employees snitched evil and lied on not only me but the other black patients because they enjoyed seeing other black people suffering to make themselves feel better. Why should I like black folks? The black preacher snitched on you, going to go in, uh, in the doctor's office and tell lies to keep you locked up in there. And I know these things myself because I got my own my records on the snitches. Because when you snitch, you got to write it down on a piece of paper. But see, most people don't read their records. I read my records. I read everything. So I know a nigga, my judge, kept me locked up. And black employees lying and snitching kept me locked Why should I love black people? Why should I? Just like you have this thing against Caucasian people because of what the ancestors done, then why should I make up a channel uplifting black folks when black people have hurt me all my life? Tell me what I do. Because, see, that's them black folks. Even here on YouTube, I had a sister I was speaking with. She accused me of stalking and wanting to rape her some old crap. A black woman. Why should I love lying ass people? Why should I love black folks? When they have done such horrible things to me. But I do. You know why? Because that was her. And I said her name. Find the video. The Goddess Network. The guy that lied on me to cause me to be in that mental institution. Anthony Ross. Diorio Love. I say your damn name. Find the video if you want. Because you're a liar. Not me. So why should I love black people? When they've been putting good, and then you got these so-called conscious black people talking about black pride and black love. They cuss you out and call you nigger quicker and longer than white folks do. They're threatening your life and want to kill you. When I was locked up in the nation of Islam, when I was locked up, talking a little bit too fast, I spent seven years in the nation of Islam. None of them visited me because. They couldn't use me no more to sell bean pies or whatever. They ain't trending about what I used to do. You're being punished by a lot, Negro. That's how they felt about it. Why should I love black folks? I love black people because that's them. But we as a people are not like that. And we should see Caucasian people in the same light. That, that was some of them, not all of them. We should be just and fair and honest and not judge everybody based on a handful. Y'all know I'm right. You know I'm right. Come on. This is the brother Tony totally keep me wrong. Shout down your comments. Peace for having our way. This was and is the reality is tough on earth. Alrighty then. That's the end of what we want to say today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for supporting the Realities Temple on Earth Ministry. I'll see y'all on the flip flop. And uh, take it easy. Again, thank you for your support of this ministry and uh, your views. And like I say, as always, respect you. And I'm already 5,000. Till next time, y'all.